This video is about bar graphs. Bar graphs are a type of graph that can be used to represent categorical data. So one of the things that I want you to notice are that some things that we need in order to complete a bar graph. One of the first things that we need is a title. So we've got this bar graph here, months that students are born in. We've got the title listed. Another thing that we need is a scaled axis. So if you look over on this side, you can see that it's counting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We want that scale to be consistent. Another thing that we need to make sure we include is labels. So we're going to label both our x and our y axis. In this case, we're labeling the x axis the months of the year. And then we are labeling the y axis the counts or the number of students uh, who were born in each month. Here's another example of a bar graph. You can see we've got the title time Bonnie spent on her math homework. Uh, you can also see that we've got a scale. It's counting by five. So we've got 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. And then you can see that we've got um, some information on the bottom here. We've got days of the week, and then we've got number of minutes that she's spending on her math homework. So what we're going to do is see if we can figure out the total number of minutes that Bonnie spent on her homework this week. So what we would need to do is to total up the number of minutes. So we're going to take this 25 plus 30 plus 40 plus 30 plus another 15 to get our total amount of time that Bonnie spent on her homework this week. And if we total those all together, we should get 140 minutes for that. And then the next thing that we're going to do is try to figure out what percent of that time took place on Friday. So if we're going to try to figure out what percent of the time took place on Friday, what we're going to do is take the number of minutes that we had for Friday, and we're going to write that in a ratio with the total number of minutes that we just came up with, which was 140. And then what we could do is convert that into a decimal. So if we convert that into a decimal, we get 0 0.1071. And then the final thing that we would need to do to make that into a percent is to multiply that by 100. And if we multiply that by 100, we're going to get 10.71%. So she spent a little bit over 10% of her time working on her homework on Friday.